today we're going to be working through the first mind ventilation practical titled air ventilation in the HVAC Newcrest Laboratory at the University of Queensland. My name is Sarah Poblett and hopefully this short movie will help you complete the prac and the report afterwards. You should all have access to the handout from Blackboard and having that with you through this movie will help you make sense of the different tasks we're going to go through. The PRAC investigates airflow, or air quantity, through a series of mind ventilation ducts. There are two main parts to the PRAC. The first, to focus on total static velocity pressures throughout the ducts, and the second, to calculate shock losses through the bends and intersections throughout the ducts. I'll now go through the theory behind the PRAC briefly. For more information, you can read the handout. There are three ways to calculate air quantity in this series of ducts. The first is using a pitot-static tube which calculates the velocity pressure from the difference between the total pressure and the static pressure. This is a pitot-static tube. It sits in the duct like this once inserted, and airflow through the duct is recorded by small sensor holes. These holes around the outside of the tube record the static pressure in the duct, and the readings come from this side outlet here. The inner tube records the total pressure, and those pressures are recorded from this straight outlet. Connecting these two outlets to the digital manometer allows the velocity pressure to be displayed on the screen. The velocity pressure is found from the total and static pressure, and the velocity can be calculated from the velocity pressure. Then using the calculated area of the duct, the quantity can be found. The second method for calculating the quantity of air is through an orifice plate or regulator, as shown in this diagram. Regulators restrict the velocity of air in a duct by decreasing the area. An orifice plate has a small hole in the middle which causes the velocity and pressure to change in the duct. The calibration coefficient for each regulator can be found from these tables, the top one for ducts A and B and the bottom for duct C, using a given A value of 6. Recording the pressure change across the orifice plate and using the calibration coefficient K for each orifice plate, the quantity of each airway can be calculated from the equation displayed. The final method is by using a vane anemometer. This is a vane anemometer. It works by airflow rotating the blades in the fan here and a gearing and clutch system inside allows the velocity and temperature of the air to be calculated and displayed on the screen to within an accuracy of about 5%. Quantity is the product of velocity and area, so by calculating the velocity and measuring the area of the duct, we can calculate the airflow through the tube. The temperature will be used to calculate the density of air from the ideal gas law. The final section of the prac calculates shock losses through the bends and T-intersections of the duct through the formula displayed. Shock losses are losses which are caused by changes in the path of travel for the air, including bends, intersections and change in area of the duct. The shock loss factor X can be found by dividing the total static pressure by the velocity pressure. This is the airway setup for the air ventilation brack. The fan exhausts air through airways A, B and C creating airflow through the duct. All the points at which data is collected are labelled as shown here along the duct and these are the regulators here in this section. Before you complete the PRAC, you must have completed the latest OH&S form, which will look something like this. It can be found in the handout and must be completed and given to the tutor when you arrive at the PRAC. It's important that everyone in the PRAC is aware of all the hazards that will be around. The first step is to turn the fan on to 200 volts, like this. throughout the mine, but you must wait a few seconds to ensure that air is reaching the ends of all the ducts before we record data. The first step in the handout is to find the current temperature and pressure. You can find this by googling UQ weather. The information you must fill out next is for table 2 of the handout. Connect the pitot-static tube to the digital manometer like this, as we had set up before. The readings from the manometer will only be accurate if the pitot tube is placed in the middle of the duct. We find the middle of the duct by inserting the pitot tube all the way, like this. Push through until it reaches the far side of the duct. Insert the pitot tube all the way through the duct and place this metal ring on the outside. You can then pull the pitot static tube out 
so that this arm of the pitot-static tube is outside the duct. This distance gives the diameter of the duct and by placing this ring halfway and reinserting the tube until that point, we can reasonably assume that the pitot-static tube is recording data from the middle of the duct. Record data in this way for all three ducts in these locations. Air density for table two is found using the ideal gas law expressed as a function of temperature and pressure as displayed, where P is the absolute atmospheric pressure, R is the specific gas constant, which is 287.058 joules per kilogram for dry air, and T is temperature in kelvins. The pressure change across these orifice plates is measured by connecting the digital manometer to these two blue outlets on the orifice plate attachment. This must be carried out in these three locations. The tables explained earlier and displayed here are then used to calculate the K factors for each orifice plate using the A value of 6. The velocity of air in each airway is recorded with the anemometer and input into table 4. Record this by holding the anemometer at the opening of each airway in the centre of the duct as much as possible. For airway C, hold the anemometer at the exhaust of the fan. Wait for the recordings to stabilise and take an average of the values you are observing for the velocity of each airway. To measure the area of each duct, the internal diameter can be measured from each opening. In tables 5, 6 and 7, we are recording lengths of airways and static pressure readings. All lengths are the total distance from the start of the duct to the point where the pressure is to be recorded. To record the static pressure at each point, connect the digital manometer to the duct via these tubes as you attach like this. Record the pressure values at the required location in each airway to fill in tables 5, 6 and 7. For calculating the shock losses of the bends and intersections at 200 volts, all the pressures that you require can be found from your recordings in tables 5, 6 and 7. For the bends and intersections at 150 volts, the speed of the fan must be changed as we did originally, but set to 150 volts. Then the readings from A5 and A6 for bend 1, for example, can be used to measure the pressure change and shock loss through this bend. The same process is carried out for all required bends and intersections of the setup. The final section in Table 9 for calculating the resistance of the duct can be calculated using the data previously recorded in Tables 5, 6 and 7 and using the formula P equals RQ squared. For ducts A and B, the pressure changes from points 1 to point 5 and from, for duct C, from point 1 to point 6. For the report, you must prepare all data and display it in an effective manner to show the relationships between losses, pressure, airflow and resistance, as well as comparing different methods for obtaining the same measurements. This is the structure the report must follow. It can also be found in the handout. All data collected during the PRAC should be displayed in the report with explanations for all calculated values. The data showing how pressure, resistance and shock losses vary throughout the duct should be graphed and discussed in the report. You should address error in your report as well. I suggest looking at the marking criteria while completing the report to ensure that no fundamental aspects are overlooked. All reports are due 10 working days after the PRAC at 5pm. Working days exclude weekends, public holidays and the mid-semester break. You must submit an electronic copy through Turnitin and a hard copy through the Submission Institute in the Hawker Building. If you have any questions regarding the PRAC, feel free to talk to the tutor during your PRAC or outside of these times by appointment. Finally, if you're looking for the original copy of this movie, it can be found from the link on Blackboard or by searching in YouTube with the keywords displayed.